page 181. Do you agree? The, this talks about, it says the table below shows that the time and days of spring, so after March 21st, uh, the young lady right here in the blue coat, she just needs to head down to a nurse. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, so after March 21st, I bet you it's not quite as wintry conditions, though we know we do get springtime snowstorms, yes? So they talk about, they said, uh, so starting on March 21st, so that'll be our zero value. Uh, we have 156 inches of snow, and then 10 days after that, 140, 20 days after that, 120 inches, 30 days after that, 110 inches, 40 days after that, 95, and 50 days after that, 75. So do we feel comfortable that the snow is melting? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first thing, what is the independent variable, the X variable? Time. And time happens to be, in this case, it happens to be in days. Okay. Now, it's not totally mandatory that you truly tell me that it's in days, especially because the data above said it was in days. But it is kind of good to know. Okay. Number two. What's the dependent variable? Snowpack. Yeah, snow and inches, right? And we'll have the double tick marks like that. All right. I feel pretty good about this so far. You good? Uh-oh. I'll take it. She'll take it. Done. Hello. Starbucks Hello. You got that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got this, dude. Is that right? Huh? No. It's oh. a note for you. No. You got in trouble. He did. Yeah, yeah. You're in big trouble. It's really a gift card to Jimmy John's. Yeah, babe. All right. Nope. All right. So it says we want to plot the points. So I'm going to. I got to kind of hand generate an XY axis. And I'm going to label my things. We labeled the X time and days. And we labeled this as snow in inches. Agree? All right. So it looks like we go out 50 days. So should we count out 50 tick marks in the X direction? Or should I count by a different number? If so, what number would you like? How much? 10? 10 might be okay, but it might kind of condense your stuff together. I think fives might be good. But if you chose 10, I, you're not wrong. I just think that it's going to kind of crunch things together. Just because we have six pieces of data. So I think if we count it by tens, might be a, a pretty good... Oh, wait. I just said tens was fine, but we're counting by fives, and I'm doing it different, aren't I? All right. So what about snow and inches? It looks like our biggest number is 156, but we have to start from zero. So tens or twenties? Tens might work, maybe. But twenties might work. I, I don't know. Let's just, just to be cool people, we'll go by twenties. And the whole thing is, when you are drawing in a line of best fit, it's just to make a visual approximation. Oh, wait. We said 20s, and I start. Oh, my gosh. 
can't take stirrup anywhere. It's just a visual representation, it's not a conclusion. That should be enough. All right, so let's plot our points. So at day zero in the blue direction is zero up to 156. So I'm going to kind of approximate where 156 would be. Do you feel okay about that? Yeah. And then 10, 140. What does the slope look like it's doing right now? going down. So what is our correlation, positive or negative? Negative, so far. And then we go to 20, 120. Then we go to 30, 110. Does it still appear it's going down? I think so. 40, 95. 50, 75. So that's my data. This appears it's going down. I feel pretty comfortable so far. Let's kick ourselves a line of best fit. Let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit thinner, though. Okay, we'll go like that. Does that appear to be a pretty good line of best fit? That made it real skinny like that so we could still see our data. Yeah? Oh, this right here is 160. This is 160. Yeah. Because I counted by 20s. <clears throat> okay. So it's definitely going down. Agree? Plot the points on the... Okay. What are the two points that we should use? Hmm. So remember I said <coughs> the rule for finding your two best points is kind of two parts. You want two points that are as close to the line as possible, but also as far apart from each other as possible. Okay? And so you might have chosen a little bit different than me, but I think I'm going to choose this point here and maybe this point here. Okay? Now, this one, maybe you pick it. I mean, you might have picked that one. That means because our data isn't exactly 100% linear, that just means that your, um, your information might be a little bit different than mine. But for the most part, you might have a pretty close slope to mine. Does that make sense? I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six points, so there's basically 12 combinations of dots you could pick, meaning you would have 12 different linear equations that could happen throughout the class. But that seems to work. So I want to I want to pick two points. So problem number four. My choice was 0, 0,156 and then 40, 95. Okay? That seems okay. Hey, what's uh, unique about one of our points? Yeah, I have a zero, so that means that's technically our y-intercept. Now, we saw yesterday on Desmos, sometimes when you plug the y-intercept in, or maybe this is the day before, if you if you chose the y-intercept and you're getting the equation, you uh, you might. And if you if you had Desmos available and you used it, you might get a slightly different y-intercept as far as Desmos goes. It, well, no, it's totally fine if you do. I mean, that's, those are the things that we are aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Why are you not using point slope? I love your thought. Yeah, because we have the y-intercept already given to us, okay? So I'm going to label this x1, y1, x2, y2. So what's the next step that we do in this case? Yeah, find the slope. Good. Good job. So 
So that's going to give me, what, 95 minus 156 over 40 minus 0. And I'm going to use a calculator for the top because we can use calculators. So that's negative 61 over 40. And you can't really reduce that. So that's our slope. Okay? All right. So now... It was great that a lot of you pointed this out. I can use y equals mx plus b because 0, 156 is the y-intercept. If you did not have if you did not have the y-intercept, you have to plug into point slope and then solve it. Oops, that's a minus sign. So that's just a few things to kind of consider. Does this feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But does everyone realize we do have the y-intercept as a point? So it's okay that we use the red. Agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go y equals, my slope is this, and my y-intercept is? Yeah, so plus 156. So that is my line of best fit. Okay, number five, does our scatter plot have positive or negative correlation? Negative. negative. Why is it negative? You're exactly right. It's going, it's going down, but what's going down? What, what's making it go down? The slope, the slope. The slope is a negative slope. Good, I like it. I like it. So negative correlation. If the slope's negative, negative correlation. Slope's positive, positive correlation. Okay? So then number six says, what is the slope? What did I have for the slope? Negative 61 over 40. So let's make sure we understand. Is the top the x or the y value? The y? The y? Is the bottom the x or the y value? Okay. So remember the y value is the snow in inches, and the x value is the days or the time in days or something like that. So, so we lose. That's loose, not lose. We lose 61 inches of snow every what? 40 days. 40 days. Now, friends, I'm going to show you a little bit different as well. If I took my six, my slope, if I converted this to a decimal, by just dividing it on the calculator, I get negative 1.525. So now you can change, you can replace this for this, and this changes to every one day. Okay, they mean the exact same thing. So sometimes that bottom that I put we, so if I said we lose an inch and a half of snow every one day, that's sometimes easier to fathom than we lose 61 inches of snow every 40 days. Does that make sense? Which one's right? Both. You pick what makes the most sense to you. But sometimes when you're trying to do the disclaimer of slope in the context of the problem, sometimes it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and then if you change it into a decimal, it becomes something more that you kind of think about. Like an inch and a half, inch and a half, you know, half your pinky, roughly. Okay, maybe down to one digit. <laughs> maybe the distance between your pupils of your eyes. No, nope, that might be a little bit more. I don't know. I'm trying an inch and a half. Not that long. 
unless you're fishing. How big was the fish you caught? It was an inch and a half. How big was it? It was this big. No. All right. What are the coordinates of the y-intercept? Well, we said 0, 156. Okay. In the context of the problem, this is the snow in inches. And this is time in days. So you can say for the context, at March 21st, which is day zero, we have 156 inches of snow. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Okay, I think I feel good. So now we have a model, and we're going to use our model to try and make a prediction. And again, we all realize sometimes predictions might be wrong, but a model is our best tool to try and figure out what might happen. Yeah? Did you ever see the polls for the elections? Were they, were they, were they, are they ever wrong? Yeah, Yeah, you're, you're using a scientific model to try and predict what might happen. So think about the weather forecast. They're using a scientific model. Actually, there's three different scientific models because you have three different weather uh, testing apparatuses throughout the world. And so what they're doing is they're looking at each of those models, and then they're going to try and make their best educated guess to predict what might happen. And we all know that the weather's wrong a lot of times. I mean, there's times it's like, hey, it's going to be 76. If, it's, if they say, hey, it's going to be 76 today and it's 77, are you like, oh, my gosh, this guy is so wrong? No. But if he says, hey, it's going to be 76 and you know, you're outside and it's five below zero, you're like, dude, <laughs> they missed that mark. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. And again, Dave Aguilera used to live down the street from me. I mean, I enjoyed him. Hey, what was my linear equation? It was y equals, um, oh, let, let's do the decimal, negative 1.525. So I'm using this as my slope, and this might be easier when trying to work out the problem. So I'm using... The slope as a decimal to try and make my predictions. Because that way we don't have to do all the fraction. Okay, it's nicer, nicer to sometimes use the decimal, especially with the calculator. All right. So problem number eight says they want to know how much snow is after 70 days of spring. Okay, so this is days, this is snow. So friends, are we going to plug 70 into our X or our Y value? It's labeled on the board. 70 going for X or Y? X, because it's a day. Okay, so this is an X value. So I'm going to go Y equals negative 1.525. I'm going to put parentheses there for a second. What used to be where those parentheses were? What used to be there on the top equation? Um, used to be x, and now I'm going to replace that with 70. And then I get to use the calculator because we're allowed to use the calculator. So this is going to give me 49.25 inches of snow. So after 70 days, after March 21st, March 21st is the last day of winter, and at midnight is when the first day of spring happens. Okay? So 70 days after that date, so 70 days is... A little bit more than two months, so April, May, so it's into June. So it's into June. 
into June, we still have 49 inches of snow up there. That seems pretty good. And then problem number nine says, when will we have zero inches of snow? So if days is X, that means this is going to be Y. So what am I going to do with that zero with our red equation up above? You're going to, no, you're not going to plug it into X. You're going to plug it into Y because Y is the snow. So, so I'm going to go zero here. That's where Y used to be. This is where Y was. And we have to solve that equation for x. And we, again, that's the second week of our class. So I'm going to subtract 156 from both sides. So that gives me negative 156 equals negative 1.525x. Divide both sides by negative 1.525. Use a calculator because we are allowed to. So you're going to go negative over negative is positive, right? 156 divided by 1.525. So rounded to one decimal. So 102.3 days after March 21st, we're going to have no snow, according to our model. So 102 days is basically three months. So let's see. March 21st, April, May, June. Like in the June 23rd, 24th, 25th, we won't have any snow up there. It'll all be bye-bye until the next big snowstorm, right, Sid? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so my friends, this is what we have planned for today. I am going to give you the take-home test. Okay? I would like you to work on as much as you can on the take-home test by yourself. Try to see, like, act like... Oh, dude, Sturbs, give me the test right now. Work as much as you can. Tomorrow during class, I will work every one of the problems out completely, including I'll give you a, a fresh one, so if you didn't want to have your stuff written down. But we will check off tomorrow. We want to take a look. Did you attempt during the rest of the period some of the problems on the take-home test? A blank one is going to mean this. You show up tomorrow with this take-home test blank, I will not allow you to use your take-home test on the test. Okay? Because that just basically means you're, you're looking for us to try and take care of you. You say, oh, I don't get any of this. Well, okay. And um, I know some of you are going to say, well, this is not fair. This is not fair. It's kind of giving a point for me and stir up, and I think as a department as well, is because we're trying to give you as many opportunities as we humanly can. But what we're noticing is the kids are not taking of that opportunity, right? So it's like the same idea is if, say, you have a friend, he's 